that we learned how to spawn a bullet, we want to learn how to make a simple explosion prefab. And every time the bullets touch the wall, they're going to spawn a very simple explosion prefab. Okay? So we're going to a hierarchy window. Let's right click and select create empty. So we have a new game object. And we want to rename this as explosion. Okay? The position is going to be uh, 0 to 0. Actually, let's change z to minus 5. Okay, this is something that can be easily tested. So we have one empty game object, it's completely invisible, and it's in the middle of the way, okay, between the player and the wall. And now, of course, this explosion needs to have a script. So you right click, select create, then we're going to choose C sharp script, and we're going to name this explosion. Okay, we're going to hit enter and wait for this compilation to complete. Now we need to attach this explosion to the explosion game object. So we're going to drag and drop here. And now we need to work on the actual logic. So the way this explosion is going to be, it's like it's going to be a particle effect that is going to respect physics. So we're going to make some small cubes in here, and we're going to spawn these cubes inside the explosion game object in the exact position where it is. So let's make three particles with three different colors. Okay, we right click, select 3D object, and then cube. Okay, let's change it to zero to minus five, so it's going to be here. Let's make it very small, something like 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and 0 0.2, so we have one cube. We're going to rename it to explosion particle one. Okay, so that's the first that we have right now. Now let's duplicate this, so we right click and choose duplicate. So we're going to rename this to explosion particle two. Let's move it here. Duplicate it one more time. Let's move it here and name it explosion particle three. Particle three. And as like we did with the bullet before, if we press play, they do not respect physics just yet. So we need to go to each of them or select the three of them by holding command or control and clicking on them. And now we select add component and add rigid body. Okay, and if you press play now, they fall. Okay, so perfect, it's exactly what we want. Let's make three materials, one for each of these particles. So right click, create, then material, explosion. Uh, let's just name this particle one material. Okay, and this color is going to be red. Let's use some key colors, red, yellow, and green, for example. We create another one, particle two material. This is going to be yellow, so this one. And another one, create material, uh, particle three material, and this is going to be green, like this. Okay, and now we're going to apply each of these uh, materials in these explosion particles, okay? So first one is red, second one is yellow, and the third one is green. Now, if we press play, we have the three particles colored and they just fall. But now we have to do something very similar than what we did with the bullet. We want to make them propel to a random direction. So each of these particles are going to have their own script and we're going to assign a certain force range that is going to be applied and it's going to move to a, a random direction. So in the assets folder, we right click, select create, then C sharp script. We're going to name this explosion particle. Okay, we hit enter and wait for this compilation to be complete. And now, on each of these particles, okay, we can select the three of them just like we did with adding the rigid body, and we can drag and drop the explosion particle script. Okay, and if you look at them individually, all of them have the explosion particle uh, component added. Okay, now we double click here in the explosion particle, and we need to set a random, uh, a certain variable here. So we're going to type public float, and then let's name this um, force, like your explosion force. And let's start with 300, actually 150F, okay? In the start method, we need to define the random direction where the explosion uh, particle is going to move to. And this one is going to be a bit easy. So we're going to type vector three random direction is going to be a new vector three. Now we have to set X, Y, and Z. So for X, we're going to use random.range and we can type minus one F in the first as the first parameter and one F as the second and repeat the same thing for Y and for Z. 
okay? The thing is, what really matters is that we're going to normalize this direction vector. So essentially, it's going to result in a random arrow that is going to point into a random position, okay? So we use this. And now, we're going to type get component of type rigid body. We open in close parenthesis, dot add force. And the force is going to be random direction dot normalized multiplied by explosion force. Okay, so that's pretty much what's going to happen here. Okay, we get this random direction, we normalize it to make sure that its magnitude is going to be one. We multiply by explosion force, so it's going to be scalable. And something that we can do here to make this even more interesting is to declare a float random force and define this to be random dot range starting with 0f and ending with explosion force, okay? So this is going to, to look more interesting because it's going to vary a lot, okay? From explosion, uh, by each explosion that you see, okay? Some of them are going to have particles that are going to move slowly and other ones are going to make these particles to move uh, much faster, okay? Up to 150. And here, instead of using explosion force, we type random force, okay? Now we're going to save this. Let's go back to Unity and let's see what's going to happen to these particles, okay? All of them are here. We have no console errors. And if we press the play button, you see that they moved into a different direction, okay? So maybe 150 might be too little. Maybe we should change that to maybe 300. Okay, let's try that, so 300. And, and notice that I just changed 300 on the first particle. So this is something quite interesting because these are not prefab. They're different from each other. Once we modify one, we also have to modify the others here. Okay, it's not going to be automatically saved. And now that we press play, they are all moving a bit faster now. So this is going to be interesting. Okay, and now that we have these three particles, we're going to turn them into prefabs and then we're going to use the explosion script to spawn these particles dynamically, okay? So we're going to choose all of these three particle game objects in the hierarchy. We drag and drop here. Actually, we need to do one by one. Yes, that's the case. So each of them are going to be saved into prefabs. And notice that when we transform each of them into prefabs, their color change from black to blue. Okay, that's because they're prefab instances. Okay, this is a game object. This is also a game object, but since it's written in blue, it means it's a copy of an object that's uh, the original one. Okay, so if you press select, it's going to choose the original prefab in our assets folder. Okay, now we're going to delete all of them, all of these particles, and we're going to write some code for the explosion. And this one's going to be a bit different from what we did in the player. We're going to type public game object, we open and close brackets and we're going to type explosion prefabs. Okay, so what did we do here? We're still making a reference to a prefab, but this time we're going to reference multiple of them. These brackets here, they basically activate, uh, they're going to say that this uh, type here is going to be an array of game objects. So we're going to have multiple references in here, we can have as much as we want. And also, we need to define how many particles we want to use. So we can type here public int uh, amount of particles. Let's set it as three by default. Okay. And whenever an explosion a game object is added, we need to, well, iterate three times, actually amount of particles times, and instantiate the uh, explosion prefabs. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we need to make a loop. So we're going to type four int i equals to zero, semicolon, i lesser than amount of particles, semicolon, i plus plus. So essentially, this is going to repeat three times. And now we are going to basically instantiate the bullets. So we're going to type game object, uh, I mean the explosion prefab, the particle prefabs, okay? So we're going to type here, uh, let's also rename this to particle prefabs. Okay, so game object particle prefab is going to be instantiate and between parentheses we need to pass a reference to the particle prefab that we want. We're going to have three of them. We have three different prefabs but we want to get a random one every time. So we're going to type particle prefabs, then we open and close brackets. We could pass, an, if we added zero here, all the particles would be red. If we used one, all of them would be uh, 
yellow and two all of them would be green but we want a random value for this index so you can just type random.range the first parameter is zero and the second one is amount of particles amount of particles is three in this case but since we are using a random range call with integer numbers the values could only be zero one or two the last one is exclusive it's not considered okay so this instantiates the particle and now to make the particles to be in the exact place of the explosion we can just type particle prefab dot transform dot position equals to transform dot position so we are accessing the transform component of the explosion we're reaching and getting its position okay and I mean the particle okay so we get the position where the particle has been instantiated and we are setting it to be the position of the explosion so whatever this game object is this is where the particles are going to appear so if you save this and go to unity and wait for the compilation the explosion now contains uh, an array of particle prefabs so we can set the size to three and move all of the prefabs into the the three slots that we have okay so we move the red one the yellow one and the green one okay and if we press the play button now you're going to see that the explosion spawned three particles okay with that force okay if you want to, to put more particles like 10 for example we can just press the play button again we just uh, set that there and apparently we have a, a code mistake okay so let's see what happened we have amount of particles set to 10 and yes the issue here is we used in the render range call we used zero and amount of particles this is actually not correct we need to get the length of particle prefabs okay that's an interesting error that happens from time to time okay so we use particle prefabs dot length okay because we have 10 we want to spawn 10 particles but we just have three prefabs so it doesn't matter how many prefabs we want we always want to get the length of the particle prefabs array okay so we save this go back to unity let's clear the console and we're going to try that again so we press the play button and we have 10 particles okay as this could be very intensive in the code we also need to destroy these particles from time to time so we go to the explosion particle and let's add here a public float lifetime let's set to 1f for now and in the update method we type lifetime minus equals time dot delta time if lifetime is lesser or equal than zero then we destroy the particle so we type destroy and pass game object as a parameter okay so we save this go back to unity wait for another compilation and after this is done we're going to press the play button okay so the particles appear but they also disappear so now that we made the explosion we need to uh, instantiate the explosions the actual uh, explosion prefab once the part the, the balls the bullets that we shoot hit the wall let's do this in the next video